A few weeks ago, I became the first player to finish the 1v7 Insane AI Challenge without limiting the AI in any way. I did this by playing against 7 Zergs and after achieving this, I became really excited to try it against 7 Protoss players and 7 Terrans as well. After trying it out for a little bit, I settled on doing 7 Terrans first. Now I saw a few streamers trying this challenge, notably I watched Heromarine try it for a few days without managing to complete it. He suggested it was impossible with his commentary, which I started to believe as well. But I think after doing a little bit of research, I might have found a way to do it. Check it out. All right, here we go, guys. You see, I'm going to spawn seven Cheater 3 AIs here. They're going to all be Terran and all set to any build. This is very important for the challenge. You can't force a build order on them to make it the hardest possible. Now, this is my second 1v7. I did Zerg a while ago, and after that, I started attempting Terran and Protoss. What you're watching here is attempt number 22, and it's obviously my best attempt yet. Now, why 1v7 is difficult is mainly because you have six AIs on the other side of the map that mine more than you, make a ton of units, and you need to be able to hold a really sick position in a choke to deal with their army. But at the same time, if you go to the low ground too fast, if you set up bunkers too fast on the low ground, your neighbor will just get aggressive, they'll pull their SCVs to kill you, they'll be very disruptive, and you won't be able to get that position up. So you need to find a way to deal with your neighbor and defend the choke at the same time. Now against 7 Zergs, I basically did that by Planetary Fortress rushing the choke, uh, which was actually a really sick strategy against Zerg. But against Terran, it doesn't work because Terrans, they make siege tanks and then your planetary is pretty much a waste of money because they just blast it to death and then uh, that's it, you know. You, you cannot really afford to waste money in these challenges, 1v7. Extremely difficult, a really cool and difficult challenge, but yeah, you can't be affording uh, to make any mistakes like that. And why the 1v7 Terran is harder than 1v7 against Zerg is pretty much for the same reason. Uh, you can't make walls because they have siege tanks so you need to hold their army without having walls like against Zerg you can pretty much wall with you know 20 planetary fortresses and 60 ebays if you want to uh, I, I wouldn't recommend it but you could but against Terran uh, you simply can't do that because they have tanks and they kill any kind of buildings that are in front uh, and besides that 7 Terrans or well Terran in, ter in general tends to harass a lot so you know this is attempt number 22 and I've played against a lot of random stuff I've had cloak banshees in my main i've had like six liberators randomly flying in and sieging my mineral line so very often you don't just have to defend the choke you have to defend the choke while defending your main base and your other bases at the same time which makes it very difficult now as you can see here this is my strategy of choice i notice on this map if you make the bunker here it is already enough to aggro your neighbor into it uh, so this is a pretty efficient way of dealing with your neighbor as you can tell I'm gonna go into detail more on this later, but you can tell I didn't make any of my depots or my factory on the right side there. And it's mostly because if you make buildings too close to the edge, Terrans will siege their tanks and kill it. And not just that, they might even aggro on the buildings later on with their liberators. So against Terran, you really want to avoid making buildings that are too close to the edge. As you can see, my factory and starport are all on the left side. And my bunker here is doing a fantastic job at uh, dealing with my neighbor. It is pretty important that you also kill your neighbor. You don't have to, but it does make the game a little bit easier. So that is another problem you need to solve. It's cool that I'm killing all of his SCVs here, but am I, am I going to be able to kill him? That's the question. Now, you may have noticed I'm not repairing the bunker. This is actually on purpose because the bunker does its job without dying. And you don't want to waste any money on bunkers. And for the later game, uh, I saw some people ask it on my 1v7 Zerg video. Bunkers are not very useful. Like four Marines in a bunker, I know in a real 1v1 game it's great, but against seven AIs, it's just, it's not very efficient. You know, it just gets rolled, it dies instantly, and that's it. So it's not like you need the bunker for the later game. Uh, you just want to use it to damage your neighbor and then move on with the game from there. Now here I was actually a little bit disappointed. I thought my neighbor was not going to have any units left, but he did somehow still have a couple of marines on that ramp. I thought I was going to be able to kill him here, but instead he had a few more units than I anticipated. A little bit of micro and save two marines, but still uh, not, not the most flying start I've ever had. Now for this 1v7 ch uh, Terran challenge, I actually did more replay analysis than pure practice. So a few times I watched my replays of previous attempts and I... I really tried to come up with ideas that would work better. Like against Zerg, 
I really just stamped out attempt after attempt until I got it. But for this one, I tried to be very logical about it and just, you know, find the scientifically best way, uh, I guess, to do this challenge. So uh, later on, I'm also going to explain into in detail the unit composition I go for because it's very specific. And I, I hope you guys enjoy it and I learned from it as well. If you want to try your own attempts, I would recommend doing it this way. I've tried a bunch of different ways. Uh, and what I'm doing here seems to be the best one to potentially finish this challenge. Um, now, as you can see, my opening builder is a lot different. Normally with the Planetary Fortress against Zerg, I would have three commands and it's pretty fast. Right now, I just went for a 1-1-1-on-1 one, 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 one base, got Liberators out very fast. Against Zerg, you don't necessarily need the Liberators that fast because you have the Planetary. But against Terran, you must have the Liberator to defend this base. Liberator plus two tanks is enough in the early game to scare them off. Without the Liberator, you would probably die. So that's why my economy is a little bit worse here, which is okay. Now slowly I'm going to get into a better, better position. Now what I want you guys to pay very close attention to this game is my tank positioning. I work this out a lot uh, against Zerg. And I'm, I'm going to keep drawing conclusions or comparisons rather to my 1v7 Zerg challenge. So I would recommend you guys to check it out if you haven't. Um, but against Zerg, you would typically put your tanks on the high ground, kind of shooting at the choke. But I figured something out against Terran that is very important, and that is just the unit positioning. Because what happens with Terran is since they have siege tanks and they make a lot of air units, if you have units on the high grounds, they will also attack the high ground instead of just going through the choke. So if you make turrets or tanks on the high ground, you will actually lose those in a less efficient way than if you just seize this low ground. So you see my tanks are a little bit further back and they're all right next to each other on the low ground. This is to make sure that they can't get picked off by individual siege tanks. Like they're really just standing in a line uh, and they're far back so they have to come into the choke and they can't pick off my tanks one by one. I'm gonna send one liberator to harass here. One thing that sucks about playing in 7th Terran is that you cannot really deny a base with a Liberator. Like against Zerg, if you see it's one Lib in a base early on enough, that Zerg might just suffer from the Liberator the entire game. Against Terrans, I haven't had that fortune yet. They always deal with the Liberator. At some point they make a Viking. But I think it's still a good move to delay. As you can see here, uh, the result of this Liberator is that that AI is going to keep his army at home until the Liberator is dealt with. Uh, and that way I'm basically fighting one less arm. Now my builder here is going to be Factory Starport Engineering Bay. And then a Fusion Core. Normally you might think you should just go for straight up more units. But Liberator Range is actually essential here. And it's mostly essential because of Vikings and enemy Liberators. Because you want to be able to protect your own Liberators from their anti-air. And you can only do this if your Liberators are far back enough because of the range. So you see, now I'm making turrets in front of my units. Once again, this unit positioning, I mapped it out very carefully. I think this is 100% the best way to do it. You have tanks, you have liberator seats a little bit ahead, and then you make turrets really close to your siege tanks. So what should happen here is that if your opponent sieges tanks in range to kill your turrets, the liberators can shoot them. At the same time, the turrets, as you can see here, cover your units from their anti-air, the liberators. Uh, and the tanks can just kill the bio when it gets too close. Now, I made one small mistake here. I'm gonna... I fixed it right away, but I'm gonna tell you guys what it is. You always must have your tanks hotkeyed to shoot at their siege tanks. It's the most important thing you can do here is to shoot their clump of siege tanks so you don't uh, lose your own tanks to them. And here, I didn't have them hotkeyed, so it took me a little bit too long. As you can see here, my tanks are quite bruised, uh, which is a slight mistake for me, but it was okay. Now, if you guys are wondering why I flew the barracks across, um, I was trying to find a base. Because sometimes the Terran AIs don't make starport units, they just go for mass bio. I was trying to find a base without a starport for me to siege with a liberator. But uh, yeah, I think in the end I wasn't going to do it anyway, so I might as well have kept it at home. But that was the purpose. Now, 1v7 Terran, in all the challenges I've tried, uh, there has never been, or all the attempts I've tried, there's, I've never come close to winning convincingly or anything like this. So it's very important you always repair your units. Repairing units is way cheaper than making a new one. And trust me if I say in this challenge, you cannot afford to make units where you don't have to. You need to repair as much as you can. As you can see, I always have SCVs here to repair and you just have to do it. Like, it's if you're ever gonna complete this challenge, it's gonna be really close. Uh, and yeah, just don't waste any units, uh, any money on that. Later on this game, you will also be able to see that I don't make any upgrades I don't need. 
Uh, I'm never gonna get plus one for my tanks or my liberators. Though one thing I thought about is you could probably afford to get armor upgrades because it might help your liberators survive a little bit longer. But yeah, I would definitely not recommend. I've tried some attempts where I went for 333 on my mech and in the end it was just a little bit too much of a waste of money. Even though my units were very cool and strong, uh, it was not quite worth it. So if you're gonna get upgrades, definitely just get the armor upgrades. Now here you can see I have to get my barracks again. Uh, so my follow-up build order after the start is I get a second starport because the Vikings and Liberators are very important as you can see My tank count is very healthy. I think we have about 10 siege tanks here um, And then after that I want to end up with two factories and four starports um, And now I, I think I yeah, I just got the range for turrets I do think that upgrade is very important like the range on turrets is gonna help a lot uh, You can get it on the engineering bay. I know it's not a very classic upgrade It might not be the one you think about for these challenges, but the range upgrade is actually uh, very huge here. Now, one problem I'm running into, I mentioned at the start, I did not manage to kill my neighbor off. Uh, and even though my neighbor cannot put any pressure on me because he's, he, his economy is too small, he's gonna mine out my base, which is rough. Now, I'm gonna give a small spoiler here. Uh, I'll, I'll probably show you guys in five or 10 minutes. The fact that my neighbor is alive is actually gonna be a little bit of a blessing in disguise somehow. Uh, that is, yeah, it's gonna be pretty crazy, but believe me, it, it is gonna happen. Now, I wanna talk about my unit composition a little bit. I very carefully mapped out the unit composition I need for the perfect army. So, I want to get to about 66 SCVs. Uh, I used to make a little bit more, like at some point I, went, I, I saw that I had 68, which is a little bit too much, but that's okay. But at some point I made 75 with a fourth base and I noticed my army was a little bit too small. But the army I want is, I want to get 14 siege tanks. I know it's very specific, but it actually, as soon as I started mapping it out, it worked perfect for me. Because uh, with the supply, it just works. So I want 66 SCVs. Then I want 14 siege tanks and 10 liberators. That is like the perfect ground force. Then eventually, that's the last thing I make, I get five Thors. Thors, they're actually a bit hard to use here. Uh, if you keep them at the front, they will just get blasted by siege tanks. I'm gonna show you guys in a little bit how to use them. But I want five Thors. And then the rest of the supply is gonna go into Vikings. And usually that ends up between 16 and 20 Vikings. Um, and the reason why it varies is because in this challenge, you're gonna lose a lot of SCVs. And strategically, I'll get a bit deeper into it later on, but you're going to lose a lot of SCVs because you always have to repair. And because your opponents have siege tanks, you're naturally going to lose a few to the splash or maybe they walk a little bit too far forward, right? Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, as you noticed here, I'm actually making two command centers. And maybe that uh, looks a little bit funny to you guys as I was talking before about how you don't want to waste any money. But these command centers are actually essential and it's because you don't want to remake too many SCVs. Uh, you want to keep your army big. And at some point, you just want to use mules for your income. Because you're going to lose pretty much every single SCV at some point. Like, you're, you're literally going to lose 50 plus SCVs because they're repairing. And you don't you obviously don't want to be remaking all of those SCVs. 50 SCVs is 2,500 minerals. You'd rather have two orbitals instead. It's a little bit more efficient, right? It saves you. I want to say, what is that? 1,400 minerals that saves you. Um, so that's definitely a good investment here. Now, this CC is... At, I wanted to take my opponent's base. But it's actually a little bit harder uh, than you would imagine. There we go. Another attack in. At some point... By the way, if you ever want to see the biggest army you've ever seen you have to try this challenge because i promise at some point i must have fought against over a thousand supply of units at once like the army gets absolutely insane now here this is something i didn't expect i'm gonna lose a thor here which is a decent mistake and the reason why i lost it is because i didn't expect them to and i should have expected this it's totally a mistake by me i didn't expect them to defend my neighbor so viciously because typically I kill my neighbor early on and this is not something I have to deal with. So I was like, I'll send one Thor to kill him. And then suddenly freaking five landed Vikings show up and some liberators and kill my Thor. So that's a little bit rough. Now at this point, uh, there's a lot of liberators coming in here. I thought I was about to die. I'm not quite going to die here. But uh, yeah, this was very close. I think that mistake I made with the Thor came very close to costing me a lot. But in the end, we do survive for a little bit longer. Now, you have to be very disciplined with this. And you need to always send more SCVs to repair. Always remake your turrets as they die. Um, I, I do think watching this, it probably would be good to get armor upgrades, by the way. Just the armor. But you can see I am very low on money. So it's always going to be a bit questionable. 
Here come my SUVs to repair. Well, one thing that's actually a bit challenging, you can see it here, is that my SUVs are getting stuck there. Because I'm so busy microing the Vikings in particular uh, against the Liberators that my SUVs are not quite getting through. And I have so many low HP units there, but it does look like they are surviving, uh, which is crazy. Now, uh, I haven't touched on the micro yet, but for the most part, the micro you want to do is, yeah, microing the SUVs to repair. But most importantly, you want to micro your Vikings back and forth. Now, let me explain how the AI uses the Liberators, right? If the Liberators come in range, they kind of tend to either siege on your tanks or attack your Liberators. But if you attack them with the Vikings, the Liberators come forward into your turrets. So you need to use the Vikings to attack the Liberators, else they might actually kill your Liberators or your siege tanks. And that's where the Vikings really come into handy. Now you can see I got my four Thors. For, for a second I looked like I was just about to die, but I did manage to stabilize, which is great. You can see my tank line is looking very healthy. And now... This is when the Thors are going to show themselves as true, true MVPs. Because remember how my neighbor defend, was defended by his, uh, by his teammates, right? With sending a bunch of Liberators and Vikings. Four Thors here is the perfect amount of units that will kill any reinforcements. So they keep sending like, sometimes they'll send like a Battlecruiser or a Banshee or some Vikings. But four Thors are strong enough against both ground and air that they can kill all of that. So basically what these Thors are going to do is draw a bunch of army away into my neighbor's main rather than attacking at the front. So this weakens their attack on the front at the same time as just giving me a lot of free units to kill with the Thors basically. You see I'm still microing with the Vikings. I explained to you guys that the perfect army composition for me was uh, 14 tanks which I have. I think it might be 13 at this point but it's about the same. 5 Thors which I have right now too. And besides that, it's 10 Liberators and 16 Vikings. So at this moment, I'm particularly missing out on Vikings. Something I'm going to do constantly over the course of this game is just checking how many Vikings and how many Liberators I have. Because every time I lose one, I'll make it again, right? I just want to make it back. Now, this is actually something that is a little bit um, counterintuitive, but is very important here, is that in this challenge... I'm actually never going to max out. And the reason is that the army composition I mentioned is the perfect army for me. And I noticed that if I make more units than that, it doesn't make it more efficient. It just makes it more likely that I bleed out, <coughs> excuse me, bleed out a unit. Like let's say I have eight Thors. Maybe I'll accidentally have two Thors a little bit too far forward and I lost them. So what happened in previous attempts was that I would uh, just bleed a few too many units and end up just not having enough money to win the challenge basically. Now here is when the blessing in disguise is showing maximum. Let me explain to you guys why. Normally, what the seven AIs do is they make a massive army and they attack you. What's happening here is that no normally the neighbor surrenders and his teammates don't consider him an ally anymore, if that makes sense. So they don't defend him. Right now, the neighbor is still alive. So instead of making a massive army at one go, they are sending in their armies non-stop all the time. So instead of fighting 1400 army supply, I mean at some point I think I'm still going to fight 1400 army supply, but, uh, or 1400 supply rather. Instead of saving that up, they keep attacking with like groups of 100 supply at a time, making it a lot easier for me to deal with it. As you can see, I have 190 supply. I'm getting this fourth base now. The biggest downside is obviously that... I can't mine that many minerals anymore. As you can see, it's almost mined out, so that's rough. But I think the pure efficiency might actually make up for it. As you can see right now, I think I got 18 Vikings. It's at 16, but I think there's two that are not in the hotkey. So I actually decided to make full use of this. So if you guys notice in the bottom of the right base, you can see it on the minimap. It appears there's a barracks and a depot or something like that, or maybe an engineering bay. I'm going to keep those buildings alive. So the opponents think I'm actually... Oh, it's two depots. The opponents think I'm actually still attacking the neighbor and they're going to permanently try to defend him and attack into me. Now, uh, because of the efficiency, by the way, like my setup is so strong, at the end, I'll have some really cool statistics to show you guys uh, when it comes to the unit kills. So I think one of these liberators is, is, is incredible. Like, it gets so many kills. It's actually insane. Um, pro probably the MVP regardless of what happens one of those or two of those liberators are actually incredible so make sure to stay tuned to the end 
Now, at this point, I felt pretty situated. Uh, what's what's going to happen now, some important parts, is remember what I said about losing SCVs. I'm, I'm pretty much going to lose every SCV I have here. And you see I'm maxed with money. But it's really important that I don't overmake units or overmake SCVs. Like right now, I could make two more Vikings and one more Thor, right? Or right now I could make two more Thors. But you only want to remake what you lose and nothing more. And that's it. Like it's really... I feel like there's a bunch of people that play 1v1 like this. Like some pros, like they, in a TVZ late game, they'll make 10 Ghosts and 10 Liberators. But I feel like in this specific challenge, uh, I found out such a clean unit composition that works. And I, as soon as I stuck to it, it started going way better. Like I can tell you guys that um, it was really hard for me to survive to 20 minutes in this challenge until I figured all of this out. And my last few challenges were, or last few attempts were really really long i think one time i survived 27 minutes and the other time i survived for 38 and a half minutes and yeah i know it sounds crazy but they have so much money i still lost at 38 and a half minutes so that's absolutely incredible right um if you guys are wondering why all these scvs are here this is actually not a bug the first time i saw it i thought it was a bug but for some reason the terran ai sent all their scvs when they're mined out so this is what i meant that you can literally fight against uh well 1200 army or 1200 supply i guess is that i have fought against the 1200 supply scv pool before with like 500 scvs um and yeah as soon as they mine out they send their scvs and actually replace them with army so it's actually a very smart thing to do by them first i thought it was a bug and it was kind of silly but they actually replaced them with army supply that's actually a very smart thing to do I, I must have gutted like 400 supply like the matter of seconds there because there was so many SCVs and stuff. Like that was actually insane. Now you see I'm pulling more SCVs to repair. I think at this point, I'm probably below like 35 SCVs or so. Uh, here, here my SCVs are actually getting stuck on the Thors. That was a little bit of a mistake by me. That's unfortunate. There we go. I think they actually get stuck again. You guys could see I moved the Thors out of the way, but they're still trapped, I believe. Yeah, there you go. Not very smart. Uh, but you can tell I'm using all my SCVs, and then I'm just using my two extra orbitals to mine with the mules, because repairing is the most important. I'm going to keep repeating it. As you can see right now, I'm 175 supply with 1.5k, 1.5k in the bank, and it looks like it's going well. But if you're ever going to win this challenge, you're barely going to win it. So these repairs are actually very important, and it's important that I do not make any extra units as well. Now, these, these Thors have actually been fantastic, by the way. Like, there's so many units over time just flying into them, which is amazing. Um, I, I, I do wonder still if there is maybe some potential for other upgrades than armor. Because I think, let's say you get upgrades for the Thors, they might shoot units down faster. That would actually be a, a whole different level of science. I think some of you guys in the comments might know more about that. Like, if you get plus two on the Thors, do they kill Liberators in one less shot? Something like that, you know. Could be good to know. But at the same time... You can tell the Thors don't really need the upgrades. The only thing I, I would consider is, is the armor, because then the Liberators might survive longer, the Vikings might survive longer. And you can tell that the main micro I'm doing here is make sure my Thors are in the right position. And besides that, I'm just looking my, uh, microing my Vikings back and forth. See a few more Liberators there to be fed to the Thors. Now, I also do recommend getting building armor. Uh, it's not as important. Like, building armor is probably actually a skippable upgrade because tanks do so much damage anyway. But I feel like the turrets might survive a little bit longer. And I can tell from experience in every single 1v7 challenge I've tried that the 1v7 challenges are very snowball-y. So sometimes you could actually lose the game because you've lost your turrets. And like what I mean by that is like very often the AI shows up with 14 liberators and six vikings right but you have five turrets at the front shredding them but if you don't have those turrets you could use your liberators and then all of a sudden you could be overwhelmed on the ground like i know 14 tanks might sound like an impenetrable defense against terrans but if you have 1200 army supply guys trust me you can break it so uh you definitely need to keep all of this together you can see my supply is 166 i'm staying strong and not making any extra units here I think here I was actually considering getting upgrades because I had a lot of units, but uh, the, the or well, actually four attempts before this I want to say is when I got 38 minutes, and I think getting the upgrades really bite me in the ass because I just had no money left. So I stayed strong and I didn't make it. Now I still believe that I have the advantage from the neighbor. You can see even micro like this is very important. I saved that Thor with red HP on the right side. Like I'm really trying to not lose any unit, and you guys are probably surprised too. I've killed. How much have I killed by now, guys? 500,000 resources worth of units, and they're still coming non-stop. 
I was surprised too the first few times how much stuff they had, okay? And I'm not sure if I explained it already, but if you guys are curious why you need to survive so much longer against seven Terrans and against seven Zergs, because I guess the seven Zergs, I think at 20, I want to say like 23 minutes, it was already pretty clear that I was winning. Uh, and here you need to survive for like 40 plus minutes, I want to say. Um, the reason is, is that it has to do with something I explained at the start. If you make your buildings at the edge of your base, the AI aggros onto it and they start attacking your main base or your fourth base instead of the, the choke, right? And it's the same thing if I would siege their gold base. Against Zerg, it is really good to siege the gold base with liberators and stuff because they waste so many units trying to kill it. Here, they will most likely just kill your unit that's attacking it with their air units, with their siege tanks in case it's ground, uh, and it just becomes a waste of money. So... Against Zerg, you can deny two full bases, uh, gold bases even, which GDAIs probably get a ton of money from. I'm not quite sure how much it is, but it must be an absolute ton. But against Terrans, you can't deny it, so they they really have infinite money, it feels like. You can see my position is very strong here. There's actually a really good way to repair, is that you can have a few SCVs on the high ground, and that's where you move your Vikings. Now, you guys could wonder, shouldn't you be using the Thors to help with the main choke? Uh, and the answer is that I've tried that, but what happens if you do that is that they tend to siege their tanks a bit faster and shoot your Thors. And it's really hard to keep your Thors alive if you're like actively trying to help at the front. Because you're microing the Vikings, you're trying to repair, you're trying to remake your turrets at any time you can. And then if you also have to pull your Thors back from siege tanks, you're undoubtedly going to mess one of those things up and most likely you're going to lose your Thors. And Thors are very expensive. I mean, at this point you can see my supply is already down to 155. I uh, I do not have SCVs here, guys. I think I probably have 10 SCVs or so, which is very rough. Here they're shooting on my Thors, actually, um, which is a little bit annoying. But the Vikings are actually killing the anti-air so they don't have vision. But one thing that the, the AI misses that pro gamers would use a lot, it's very simple, by the way, but is that they don't scan for vision. AIs only scan for detection. If I had a cloak Banshee, they would probably scan. But they would never scan the high ground to be able to attack my Thor or something like that, you know? Like, they just don't do it. So here you can see, 147 supply, I'm staying strong. There has not been an extra unit made at all. Oh, it seems like I've actually blocked my SUVs. Guys, if one of you does this challenge, and you manage to not block in your SUVs, you're a legend, by the way. Like, that's... You see, I keep having to, like, unseach tanks. Uh, realistically, at this point, since I'm mined out, I should probably be using mules to repair. I think I'm gonna do that later. Uh, as soon as you're mine out, you can totally just use mules to repair as well. It's fine. I'm actually not sure if mules repair faster or not. I feel like that's something I should know. But like in in one of the high level games, you typically don't want to use mules to repair. You want them to mine, right? So I've never actually paid attention to it. I kind of imagine they repair at the same rate. But it wouldn't surprise me if they repair faster. It's just not a feature I've paid attention to. Now, one thing that I find very fascinating, by the way, is that... The AI also does not max out on upgrades. Like, you would expect the AI to go for 3-3, right? Uh, especially when they're this rich. But typically when I click on their units, I figure out that they only have 1-1. One, one. So if you have a 3-3 three, three army, it would actually be incredible. Now, in this kind of game, you see I'm scanning here, still making units. Um, I, want, I want to know when I should be trying to move out here. But they're still sending a, a ton of units across. Now, normally... Um, you do need to survive for like 40 plus minutes, like I said. This game, I wasn't quite sure how long I had to survive for. And it's mostly because of the dynamic I explained with the neighbor. Where instead of making an absolutely massive army, they're just non-stop rallying units into me. And I would imagine it means they're losing stuff faster, right? So maybe I actually don't have to survive as long. Right now it seems like their army is thinning a little bit already. Now what happened to me in my attempt that was 38 minutes was pretty much this. Um, I think I was I was doing a little bit worse than this, maybe, or uh, maybe, actually, I don't know. I, I just, it could have been a little bit better even, or, or even, I don't know. I think it was probably the same, but instead of the money, I had 333 on my units, that's what it was. And at some point, I moved out, and they still had, like, four armies. Uh, and the reason why it's possible is because some of these AIs are probably out of money. Like, it really depends on the build order they do, the units they make, the strategy they choose, if they were annoyed in the early game, etc., right? Some of these AIs probably have no money, but when I checked the replay of that attempt that I, that I failed, I noticed that one of the AIs had 15k minerals and 8k gas still, which is basically an entire army. 
So it's very likely at this point there's still three AIs that can make a massive army. Uh, and I'm not going to risk it until I'm sure. Now here you can see the repair mules are coming in. This is actually very nice. Um, one thing that I didn't abuse as much that I was attending to abuse since my 1v7 challenge. Once again, I always read every single comment you guys write. So every suggestion is, is very welcome. If you guys want to see uh, some more of this content, make sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments, by the way. Like, uh, I always read it and you guys... What you, what, what you, sorry, I'm misspeaking a little bit. What you guys wanted me to do was use depots from the orbital instead of the mules. And I was really intending to use it, but... I noticed that throughout the game, it's always very close. Especially until you get completely set up. So I just want to make as much money as possible. I do still think in the, the ideal perfect run, you probably drop a lot more supply depots to save money as well. Though at the same time, it only saves you minerals and not gas. As you can see here, my, my mineral gas ratio is very balanced. Like that's probably the ratio most units cost, right? Uh, like a siege tank you could make siege tank viking with that ratio for example and probably end out quite well uh so maybe it doesn't matter that much if you save the minerals but it's definitely something i wanted to try now it, it, it's the same point as earlier you could expect me to make 10 more siege tanks now but instead i just know from experience it's better to save the money and repair now against zerg surviving is pretty much the winning condition because like I mentioned before, against Zerg, you can take the gold basis. So, as soon as you defend, you can actually take the gold yourself and mine more money. Here, I was trying to bait him in with a mule, but it didn't work. I wasn't sure how to bait the AI in, so I tried to do it with a mule, but they're just a little bit too terrified of my position. But anyway, against Zerg, you can take the two gold bases next to your base, because you can deny them. Here, every single base is mined out. So, this 146 supply... 2100 minerals 1200 gas is everything i'm gonna have i'm not gonna get okay this is actually really funny by the way i actually wasted like 20 minerals here because i'm shooting the turret but my scvs are in auto repair so they were trying to repair the turret which is kind of funny now i'm killing my tanks to make a pathway here here i saw a surprisingly big army so i decided to siege again for a little bit like i'm really not taking any risks here at all um what well, one thing that i also haven't thought about too much is and I, I'm, I wouldn't recommend it to you guys, but it could maybe be possible to make reactors on the starports instead of four starports, right? I feel like that's something everyone may, maybe would have thought about by now. I just think, similar to a 1v1, the momentum is very important. If I make a reactor, a reactor takes very long to build, guys. A reactor takes longer to build than a viking, so... If I... It, it's, it's pretty much just a greed thing. If I make reactors, I'm gonna save money, right? Because I don't have to make an extra starport. But at the same time, it does increase the chance that I die. So I think here, when I realized they were backing off, is when I decided to move out. Like, keep in mind, my army is still completely intact here. I have my ultimate army, I believe. I might be missing one siege tank, but besides that, I think my army is complete. Now, here I was trying to bait him in again. Doesn't quite work. Uh, you can definitely bait in the AIs in some ways. Now, here I was going to try to use the Thors to attack from the high ground. Um... Uh, this is the kind of moment when you should abuse the fact that the AI doesn't scan for vision. Because I could have attacked the tanks from the high ground here, but I was just a little bit too scared that was a viking. Here we go, the Thors are going to come from the high ground now. I think uh, some of these Thors have a lot of kills, by the way. Like, at, at the end of the game, I'll rewind the replay and see how many kills they had in total. Like, here we go. We're going to lose one tank. It's actually really funny. We lost one tank there for probably about 20 supply units. But you're still never sure if it's worth it, because... Uh, it, it's very likely that they just have that much more money in total, you know, so it's actually I'm not even sure that was a good trade, but I baited him in and The most reassuring thing here is that there's no air units because the ground is not really the problem Like ground units are probably not gonna get through my 10 liberators Especially like maybe through the siege tanks like if it's a really big concave They could get through the siege tanks, but not through the liberators But the fact that I haven't seen any air units for a while uh, is very reassuring here now I mentioned it a few times before. I'm just going to keep mentioning it. I'm going to be super careful because I, you know, it's, it's 30 to 40, guys. I lost an attempt at 38, 45. So I'm really going to be scanning. I'm going to be sieging until I kill the last of their units. Like, I'm not going to uh, take any risk here. No chance. Now, I think uh, as long as you have scans, that's actually where the six orbitals come in handy, too. Like, I made two extra orbitals, but it's not just good for the, for the mules. Now you can also just scan everywhere. Because I'm actually not 100% sure how the AI coding works when it comes to that. But I think at some point, the AI decides it cannot break your position. And then it just sits back. 
Because all this time it was attacking me, right? Hey, you see, this is the reason why I'm seized. I'm gonna kill all these units for free. Uh, that is fantastic. I think I killed three siege tanks. But at some point, it seems like the AI decides it can't kill you anymore and then it just sits in their base. But I've legitimately, no exaggeration, I've tried to go across and kill my AI's bases, or my, my AI's, my enemy's bases, and then I'd find out they had a maxed army hidden in the corner of their base. And I just really wonder what, like, went into that, you know? Uh, so that's why I'm taking it very careful. I know uh, in, in the 1v7 Zerg, a lot of you guys were annoyed that I took so much damage from the spines and spore crawlers while uh, doing my game-winning push. So here, especially because I was way more careful than against Zerg because I knew uh, there was more chance this is going wrong. I'm actually taking it very careful and sieging my units. Now I was kind of hoping there'd be some more gas to mine there, but it doesn't look like it. And I think I'm also going to add some turrets here in a second, just in case. Uh, one thing that scared me here is that I saw a few ravens fly to the top of the map. Which makes me believe that the guys on the top still have an army. Uh, and that's probably an army that is... That they deem too small to fight me. Else they would attack me. Uh, but once again, they've hidden maxed armies before, so I'm not quite sure how it works. I wonder if it has something to do with army value, actually. Because the Cheater 3 AIs, they have map hacks and they have money hacks. But the most important part here is they have map hacks. So technically... They know exactly what my army supply or my army value is, right? I mean, maybe computers know that in general, by the way. But they should know exactly how much army value I have. So maybe if they have less army value than me, they decide not to attack. It could be something like that. Even if they have a combined more army, I think. Um, but then again, I kind of doubt they had more army value than me individually. So maybe it's like collectively. But even that doesn't make too much sense because they have been maxed sometimes. Now... The only thing I need to see that I know I've won this game is just the army of the guys on top. Because these guys on the bottom here are completely dead. I cleaned out the bio very cleanly here. Um, it's really funny that my neighbor is still alive, by the way. If you look at the minimap on my fourth base, you can see my neighbor is, uh, is still chilling there. Um, but as soon as I, I... Okay, there's some more ravens here. Like, I think the ravens were actually scary. Not because of what the ravens are. But just that it meant that they probably still have an army up top. Yeah, I'm even putting my... Like, those ravens actually could have killed all of my liberators probably, which is already pretty annoying. Now, depending on the, what kind of army they have, the liberators could be very useful or not. If it's like mass siege tanks, the liberators are absolutely broken. If they have uh, only vikings, the liberators are obviously not going to be that good. Now, that's one of the... Cheater, this one, actually, the one you do, I was looking at right there, surrendering, so that's nice. Now, I'm just going to keep scanning on top. And as soon as I know what kind of army I have, I'll be able to judge the game. Though I think at this point, I should win the game even if they have an army. Because I killed the bottom half of the AIs, right? And I've been winning fights against all of them. So I might have to like fall back to some kind of choke if they have a big army. But even in that case, I feel like if I micro well, like not to get too overconfident, right? If I micro well, I should be able to beat their army still. It's also the reason why I'm flying my command centers and my barracks, by the way. Like, I'm really just trying to get a, a clue of how much they actually have on top here. Because, like, a barracks, I feel like it would probably draw aggro. Now, so far, I've only seen ravens, which is reassuring. Like, I mean, ravens are pretty good. If you guys watch my YouTube channel normally, you've probably watched my raven heli to get master. I know the power of ravens. But ravens are pretty good. But here, they're probably not the scariest thing because I have a mass mech army. And I know I, I, I only, quote-unquote, only have a 148 supply, but this is all army. I, I, if I would have to guess, I would say I have four or five or six SCVs, which means that I have a bigger maxed army than a lot of people would have in a 1v1 game if they have like 80 SCVs or 70 SCVs, right? So uh, this army is actually terrifying. Now, I still haven't seen more units on the top side of the map. Like, I know the, the AIs on the left side, like those two gold bases on the left are probably dead. Um, I do have to seize those because they're planetary fortresses. Now, one thing that's actually annoying here is all these turrets. It was the same thing when I was playing against Zerg. I would fly my liberators and stuff into spores all the time. Liberators are so fast. And that, that scan right there, those two scans were the most reassuring scans. Because at this point, I realized I had very likely won the game. Because if they had units, I probably would have seen them there. Uh, yeah, this, this year I was actually trying to avoid elimination by making a depot there. That's why I zoomed in. Uh, that was kind of funny. But unless they have an army, uh, that's probably my neighbor, I think. Unless they have an army on the left top side, 
this game should be completely won by now because i only saw a few ravens now like i said guys i will show some cool statistics at the end so make sure to stay tuned for that now actually dealing with ps pretty annoying you can see my vikings keep going forward and then i put up the viking and then a freaking turret shoots it i wonder if ais would actually get the um the range upgrade for the turrets and the planetary and stuff uh probably not right that's the, that's the only reason i'm doing so well guys is because the freaking turret upgrade i know you guys really like your uh your turret upgrades i, I always got <coughs> excuse me i got a lot of requests to make uh, building armor more often and the range upgrade more often now the range upgrade in tvt is 100 percent must if you don't get the range upgrade for your turrets you're actually insane like it's just you need it to deal with the liberators or oh, once again freaking turret shooting my Liberated. They actually do so much damage, you know. That Liberator was shot for a little bit, and it's already only orange health. Almost killed the Viking, instantly landed it. I'm actually not quite sure if Smart Service is a good investment, like I said. You can see how much money uh, I have and how much army supply I have, right? Like, there's really not much money. So I'm not sure if building armor and Smart Service are worth it, because building armor... I feel like my turrets mostly get attacked by siege tanks, in which case the two extra armor doesn't do that much, right? And smart servos, it will help my Vikings land faster, but I kind of feel like if I'm fighting with my Vikings on the ground, I might have already messed it up, right? So not quite sure about those. Uh, j just to be clear, the building armor, I might have uh, misspoken a little bit. The building armor is not completely necessary, but the turret range is 100% necessary. Now, you don't have any planetary fortresses if you play like this, but you definitely have a lot of turrets and you need to remake them every time. Um, I, I was very stoked to find out about all this new stuff, by the way, because this challenge seemed straight up impossible until I discovered the way to position my units to only defend the low ground and not put anything on the high ground there. Because if you try to find the, uh, to defend the high ground and attack the gold base like you do against Zerg, I feel there, there's absolutely no chance. Uh, and with this, I've actually started to get some really deep runs as well. I got... Uh, this is my third deep run, and I want to say about six attempts. So, with this approach, this challenge is actually very... Um, how do you say this? Like, reproducible, I wanted to say. I don't know if that's a word, but you could do it uh, again and again, I feel like. like. I feel like I could probably... I mean, at this point, it really seems sure that we have uh, the game in the pocket, right? Especially because the AIs on the right only have two or three Ravens. Uh, and I, I believe I could do this challenge again. Um, because this, yeah, this approach just seems really strong. And what I'm really excited for, guys, I think you guys want to see that as well, is to do 1v7 against Cheater 3 Protosses. Now, I can tell you guys that... After I completed the 1v7 Zerg challenge, I tried to play some against Random, some against Protoss, some against Terran. There is a decent chance that 1v7 Protoss is impossible. Uh, I think you would need some really cool exploits to be able to do it. Because what happens to me is I would literally, and this is no exaggeration, I would literally be sieged with a wall with 180 supply of Liberators and Tanks. And they would A move straight through me. Like, Liberators and Tanks just don't do well enough against the Protoss army for that to work. Like, I'm not kidding. I had 180 supply of Liberator tank, and they would A-move straight through it, and it wouldn't even be particularly close. So, I don't know how I'm going to finish it, but I feel like since I found the answer to the 7 Terrans, maybe I'll find the answer to the 7 Protoss players as well. Obviously, if you guys have made any headway yourself, I would love to know. Uh, steal your guys' ideas. Obviously, I would give you credit if your idea is the golden one, right? So, uh, so don't hesitate. No, I think... Wait, do I even have scans left? You see, now at this point I'm convinced there's no army left. So I'm just kind of A-moving my army across the bases. I think these are the last two AIs that I have to kill. And once again, guys, we have uh, made a really cool achievement. When I was the first one to beat the seven Zergs, I was actually very stoked about it. And this challenge seemed really hard. I saw some people do it on streams and no one could finish it. And I actually did manage to find the answer, which makes me super happy. I think ideally I would have done it on a different map. I think it would have been really cool if I managed to do different maps for the challenges. But in the end, this one just seemed like the best one. Maybe it'll be different for the seven Protoss players. Who knows? I know there's a lot of maps you can uh, do this on. I kind of feel bad for the Liberators here, by the way, because the Liberators are just kind of hard chilling and I don't have too much to do. And there it is. The Cheater AIs have surrendered, guys, and we have done it. Fantastic achievement. 1v7 against the Cheater 3 insane Terran players. There we go. Now, the units lost there looking incredible, by the way. 17k against probably a combined, I don't know, what is that, 500k? I'll show it again in a little bit. Unit count, they had six SUVs left and I had my entire army. Now, let's check some kills. 85 kills on that Libs. 295 kills on that Liberator, guys. 295. 145. 299 on another one. That one is the MVP right there. 
Let's look at some of the other units. This store has 80 kills, 48. Let's see, any higher ones? The Vikings don't have a massive amount of kills. I think, I think the highest th kill store was 80, right? Or maybe 60? On these tanks, 100, 112. A 112 kill siege tank, guys. A 299 kill liberator. And a freaking 80 kill Thor. That is incredible. Now here I just wanted to quickly show um, which MVPs they were. Yeah, these two libs at the front. There, there they are. 224, 232. Those are the ones. Units lost looking absolutely insane. If someone wants to calculate it, be my guest. Here you can see the score summary. Some of you guys really wanted to see this. So here you go. 312 APM in this challenge. Score summary, uh, maybe you guys guessed it, but I was the best player in this lobby. 3,163 units killed, 30, 3, 335 structures killed, army value absolutely dwarfing my enemies at the last point. And this is my favorite part, the resource collection. You can see how little money I make compared to all of them. Like they quite literally had 20 times more money than me. Anyway guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. Hope you guys really enjoyed this challenge, this new record. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you all for the next one. Peace.